Hey, look, I got Adele on next. Finally. Finally, yes, exactly. <laughs> you're here because you're going to call it a career on July, I, June, Actually, June 30th. 30th yeah. June 30th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 24 years at Nine News. 23 and a half. I count 43 years in broadcasting. About 43 years in broadcasting. You were 16 years old. Yes. When you stepped to a microphone, yes. radio. So you can do the math. La Follette, Tennessee. La Follette, Tennessee. La Follette. Um, all right. If you could go back and tell 16-year-old Adele in her first radio job where the business and life was going to take her, what would you tell your 16-year-old self? Oh, my gosh. That you are about to embark on a life journey like none other. You will learn a lot. You will cry. You will jump up and down with joy. You will meet some of the most incredible people. You will get to do things and see things and go places you've, you've never been and might not ever get to do otherwise. Um, there are good things, there are bad things. Oh my gosh, how many jobs can you do where there is something new every day and you learn something new every single day and if you don't, it's your fault. What did you think it was going to be when you were 16? I had no idea when I was 16. It was kind of cool. It was being in a field that women really had not made any inroads at all into. So it was kind of like, ooh, this is different. This is fun. This is something that not a lot of women do. And it was kind of in that time where women were still trying to prove themselves um, as contributing members of society. I mean, you know, there were the days when, when you sat on a new set, you were set dressing. And that was the term that was used, is set dressing. Um, so it didn't matter what you had between the ears, it mattered what you had in front of your face. When you came to Nine News in the early 90s, that marked the end of Nine News's two male anchor mm -hmm. model, the standard model in the industry. Could you imagine making that transition, that change in an era of social media with the 24-7 oh, feedback, no. what I, that would have been it like? It would have been crazy. It would have been disastrous. It would have been suicidal. Um, but that wasn't the first white male team I'd broken up either. It happened in Chicago because Walter Jacobson and Bill Curtis were a team in Chicago at WBBM. And um, I didn't break them up, but I was hired to replace one of them. Um, so gender has always been a factor uh, in my career path. Social media, oh my gosh, I, I don't engage as I should, but I don't know if I would survive, really. If, if I know I'm pretty thick-skinned, I don't know if I'm that thick-skinned. Because for all the trolls and the nasty <laughs> comments that everybody <laughs> in the business gets, Women in the television business get a special kind of just nasty, disgusting vitriol. That's too bad. Does it, does it ever get to you? No, it really doesn't. And I am one of the few of my generation that is not on Facebook. I probably should be. I choose not to be. I do enjoy Twitter. I enjoy engaging on Twitter to a degree. That makes my heart so happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were kind of a deciding factor in that too. I'm like, hey, Kyle, how do you do that? Kyle, what should I say on but this one? But you do enjoy and then, it. I do. And I have found it to be a, a source of information. Um, it is not very well vetted and you have to pick and choose um, what are trustworthy sources, but that's easily done. So what other avenue do you have that literally can give you information immediately as it happens? I mean, that's the nature of our industry and our business is going live and bringing you information that's happening now. It has never happened before on such a large scale and at such speed ever before. It's incredible. Are you hopeful about the future of journalism and TV I, you know, news? I'm, I'm a Pollyanna. I've always been that way. I've seen a lot of ugly things happen in this business. I've seen it morph. I've seen it change. I've seen it grow. And not always for the better. I think that there will be kind of a... Um, uh, a pendulum swing back. I think that, you know, for a long time we were here, I think we kind of went out here, I think we're kind of making it back. It may never go center again, but I think we will survive um, in some form or fashion, we being local news. Local news will survive. There is a need for local news and there's an appetite for it and we do a service. What's the course back to that center then? 
I don't know, like I said, I, I, it may not ever go back center again, and maybe it shouldn't go back that way again because of social media. It has changed the way that we disseminate information. It's changed the way that people consume information. Uh, we've tried to keep up and we try to keep changing. I don't know if we'll ever be able to keep pace uh, with that rate of change. And that's the big question. Oh, that's the question mark for everybody in this industry mm -hmm. right now is how do we survive? How do we make it work? How do we monetize it, like it or not? Um, it's, it's just so different. And I'll be frank with you, I, I feel like I'm kind of getting passed up. It's hard for me to run and catch up and keep up anymore. Um, that's part of it. Um, a lot of it is, oh my gosh, I've done it for 43 years, it's time. <laughs> you say it's time. I also remember you saying it was time something like five years ago, well, and then I they kept asking did. you to stay know, and stay and stay. And here's the thing is, uh, the whole, I guess, philosophy of life is, if you don't enjoy getting up, every, not every day, most days, and want to go to work and feel like you're valuable, feel like you're challenged, feel like you're mentally challenged, then it's, it, it's not worth it anymore. If you want to get up every day and you enjoy doing what you do and enjoy the people that you work with and feel like you're making a difference, then you should keep on doing it. I'm just tired. I, I, I have other parts of my life that I've been cultivating for a very, very long time that it, it's time to stop for a moment and kind of, for, I hate cliches, enjoy the fruits of your labor. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are just things that I have neglected and not intentionally, but because it's such a demanding job, things get pushed aside that should not get pushed aside and they deserve some time now. I wanna ask you about that specifically. Um, you're gonna make a face because I'm gonna compliment you, but I, I have always admired your quick wit and your intellect and your professionalism, but I also admire your marriage. Um, you have built an, an astonishing marriage despite all the pushes and the pulls of the business and the hours and everything else. How did you and Barry do it? Well, he was a cop and I was a radio reporter. Those are the two things. I mean, it's the highest <laughs> divorce rate at the time, <laughs> there you, you know. Go. <laughs> um, it was just a commitment. It is it's truly a commitment. And uh, my husband very, very early on knew that I was pretty career driven at a young age and told me, the quote was this, I will never stand in your way. And he never did, and he sacrificed a lot. I sacrificed for him as well. It has always been the priority in my life. So there's always kind of a, uh, a prioritization, if you wanna put it that way, number one, two, three, four. In that order, it cannot change, you cannot waver. I've given up a lot of personal time, yes to be here and to be part of the industry and work has just demanded so much of that part of me uh, that it takes a partner who understands that by the same token. He is totally unaffected by it all. Did you watch the news tonight? No, I didn't have a chance. <laughs> Did you see so-and-so? No, I, you know, no, I really didn't. And he would watch on occasion, um, but it was not a part of my persona to him and it wasn't part of our persona as a couple. It was something that I had a passion for, that I did for a living, um, that he knew I loved doing, and it impacted our lives on the peripheral, but it never touched our core. Mm -hmm. I think you're gonna walk out the door and you're not gonna miss it a bit. And that used to offend me. And, but then I think I realized it's about just the closing of the one door and the opening of the Absolutely. other for you. Absolutely, and I think that you can get so tied up in this business that it's not healthy. Um, and I think that all of us go through that to a point. If I couldn't have done it 10 years ago, I would have regretted it. I probably couldn't have done it five years ago. I would have regretted it. Now, I will not regret it. I am so ready to move on at this other juncture, take this path, that there was some apprehension. As early as a year and a half ago, it's like, <gasps> Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm going to end this all in June. Th I knew that 18 months ago. Yeah. Um, now it's become total anticipation. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. And it's so bad because it's like, oh, it kind of gushes out. It's like, I'm okay, but no, I can't really wait. I'm, I'm so <laughs> excited about doing this because there's so much that we have planned. And we've been together 40 years. We've been together 41, married 40. And, you know, the... 
Um, it, it's, it's a metaphor because literally on our 40th wedding anniversary, we are going to be driving down in an SUV to Arizona to begin this whole new chapter. So it is closing one door and opening up this other one. And when you step through that door, you know, I don't know if it's going to be utopia, but it, 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 I think it's going to be pretty darn close. <laughs> Well, this place will not be the same without you. I know you won't miss this. I hope you miss us. <laughs> I we will. will miss you. Absolutely. That's the one thing that I will miss the most um, are the people here. And for everybody who's, who's tuned in at home every night, faithfully, two days, two years, 20 years, whatever it, it's been. Um, and that's made, it's made it so amazingly wonderful. I mean, it really has. I have been so, I'm not going to say lucky because it's not luck. I have been so blessed and I know how blessed I have been. And I am every day thankful for the life that I've been given. We'll leave it there. See you down the road. Okay, you will.